means that you can do it across geographies. Um, and so there are two unique things with the geo-replication that makes it different from um, the replication that's, that's, uh, that, that Lauren talked about. So the first part is it, it's asynchronous replication. Um, so meaning that um, whenever, with, with the replication that Lauren talked about, um, the replication happens synchronously. So whenever I write a file out to a replicated volume, I, I write it out to all the copies at the same time, and then I could return, I, I could return back and do some more processing. In the case of geo-replication, I, I would write a file out to the slave site would eventually become consistent over time, but, but it's not instantaneous like replication. And that's due to like speed of light, and you don't want to have the, the have your, your file system blocked until all the replicas are all written out uh, across the world due to high latency. The second feature is, or, whoops, go back. Sorry. Um, the second thing is that um, that's a difference with, with the geo-replication is that it is one-way replication, meaning that um, that it, it only goes from the master out to the slave. So if I create a file here, it'll make it out to the slaves, but if I write something on the slave, it doesn't get go back to the, uh, the master. It's not two-way replication. Um, so that's a future feature that, that the classroom team is working on, to be able to do two-way uh, uh, long-distance replication. But regular replication is two-way. Yes, exactly. So, and, and, it, and, and so, um, yeah, so what, what Lauren will show is that she'll write a file out and then it'll get replicated out to all the nodes. Um, whereas with the way it would work here is that I would have a client, I would write to this local cluster and I would write that file out and then it would trickle the, the changes out to the DR site. And, and it's essentially doing an rsync uh, securely. Steve? Um, I use cluster at home and very simple configuration on the server one there. But, <coughs> I seem to recall during the configuration that the transport mechanism for the, uh, the data, was that there were some choices there. I used TCP, but uh, was there also a UDP choice option, or can these be multicast with the code and something like that? I don't know about multicast, but I know that, that TCP is the default, and and, I'm, and and I would presume that then UDP would be a choice. I haven't tried that. Um, but I also do know that, that RDMA is an option as well. So if you're using things like InfiniBand, um, that you could you could go over that for like really really high speed uh, transport. Yeah. So go ahead and give Steve a pen. <laughs> All right. Uh, so next slide, Lauren. So um, and and this is my last slide here for a minute. But the the other thing that's neat about uh, a feature with the geo replication is that you can actually do multi site cascading geo replication, of course. Um, and so what that means is that. Instead of uh, just being able to write to one site, I can actually cascade it to go from site A to site B, and then from site B to site C. So if you think about it, like if you're Netflix, and, and the new Star Trek movie comes out, and you can have it at your primary site, but then you could replicate it out to your other sites, and it's almost like the telephone game to get out from one to the next. And, and so you can do it in a linear fashion, but you can also do the copies in parallel as well. Um, so, like in this case here, we're writing from site A to, uh, to have replicas out to site uh, G. So that would be, uh, it, it would actually be six transfers. So if I did it this way, it would be, uh, in a, let's say it was an hour to transfer each, each replica. Um, it, would, it would take six hours linearly to do all of those copies. Whereas here I could do this in parallel, and then that replica could happen um, in two hours because it would take one hour here and then one hour for this series, and it could happen in parallel. So, those are the volume types, and now Lauren's going to do a demo. Okay. So, what do you say about the cluster? So, first we can see if there are 
are a current peer that the other server calls in the R in the on with the R server plot. So we do a cluster peer for it. Oh no, sorry. Cluster peer steps. And as you can see, our lonely little server has no peers. So if we do a peer probe, that will cause it to recognize, oh, there's another server out there. And it'll tell you to probe two. <coughs> if you don't, if you put in, if you just put plus your peer probe, it won't probe. And then if I do another plus your peer status, Says accepted peer request, not peer request. Yeah. 